Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more from the depths. Continuing on with uh, yet another tutorial. This time around, we're going to be talking about laser weapon systems. We've already featured the custom cannon and the missile slash torpedo systems. Now it's time to dive into uh, the laser systems. Now this is one of the more complex systems and one of the uh, ones that takes a, a quite a bit of uh, a learning curve to, to get <laughs> an understanding of. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, I'm going to build a little bit of a uh, platform here to put our laser system on. But before we get too much into things, I am going to add a, uh, under the prefab tab, I'm going to add a small engine. Uh, the reason we're going to need to do this is because uh, laser systems work very similar to the way that an electric engine works, in that you have batteries that power the electric uh, engine. But to charge those batteries, you need a uh, generator that's powered by a uh, fuel burning engine to get it to work. And this, the laser system works similarly in that it needs a engine. It could be an electric engine, but it needs an engine of some type to recharge its batteries or cavities as they're called. So let's go ahead and jump into the laser tab here and we can see what it's all about. Now, just like with the other weapon systems I uh, have shown tutorials on, there's gonna be a basic building block of uh, the laser system and that is the multi-purpose purpose laser. You're gonna need to build everything off of this and this is gonna be the main control unit of the laser system. Now, I'm not putting this on a turret like I have with the other weapon systems just to keep it a little bit on the simple side. And now, the next system we're going to need is a laser coupler. This is a very important system. Oop, that's not what I want. I want a laser coupler. We'll do the Q switch a little bit later. And then, the next important thing is your cavities. Now, the cavities are uh, pretty much your batteries, as we've explained in the, uh, that analogy. These are the batteries that charge or power your weapon system. And we can actually see a summary of how much power that uh, those cavities are giving me. So for each of those blocks I put down, it gave me 100 energy. So we have a total of 400 uh, being delivered by the this series of cavities. And you do have to build them in a straight line like this. And we can also build more than one uh, series of cavities. So if we build another one out this way, and you will have to orient this so the uh, forward facing is facing a slot in the coupler. You can see that there's actually a physical slot in the coupler on four of the sides. There's not one on below, but uh, on top and on the left and right and behind or to the rear of the block there will be. And you will have to orient it, orientate the cavities so that the forward facing of the cavities is facing that slot. And then you can build off. And as we can see, now there's two uh, energy sources. You have this series and this series. Now these two series are completely separate from each other and will act independently. I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now uh, because I want to keep this weapon sy uh, system simple and just have the one power source. Uh, but the next system we're going to need is the laser pump. The laser pump is uh, what supplies or recharges the cavities with energy. Now, the legal placement for this is you can put them on either side, you can put them on top, you can put them on bottom, and you can even put them at the end like so. Uh, but you do have to face it so that, you know, that the little green peg there uh, is facing towards the cavity, and then you will place it on. Now, the more of these pumps I put on the cavities, the faster it will charge. And just to show that we can uh, do the placement on top as well, we'll do that. And we can see now it's charging. So whereas before it said 0 of 400, now it's charging up and it's saying, you know, 250-ish of 400. And eventually it will charge fully. There are also a couple modifiers you can place on the uh, the cavity series. A frequency doubler, which will increase the armor piercing value of your laser and your laser destabilizer. This will increase the overall damage at the cost of consuming more energy. So let's go ahead and put one of each. And the orientation is again very important. You're going to need to have the forward facing uh, towards uh, the uh, cavity in front of it. And you can see the engine is stopped because we've fully charged uh, the cavities. And then a laser destabilizer. 
So we have both modifiers on there. And if you're ever uh, curious on whether or not a system is correct, connected correctly, it will give you an indicator of that by saying connected to laser multipurpose ID number, which is this up here. Okay, uh, now let's put the next part. Now we are skipping a step that is a very important step, uh, but I'm going to want to. I'm going to want to. I want to demonstrate uh, what happens if you don't set this up necessarily correctly. You might think you set it up correctly, but you really, in reality, don't. Now the next system we're going to do is the laser combiner. Now the laser combiner is somewhat su similar to the firing piece. It's not the building block of the laser system, but it is where the laser will be fired out of. And this is where you will more or less uh, place your quote unquote barrels or optics in this case uh, out of. So let's go ahead and put our laser combiner and the orientation of this is which way the laser will fire towards. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we have two types of optics. You have steering optics and laser optics. Now the steering optics are going to increase in size or diameter the optics. And what these will do is they will increase the uh, arc of fire that the laser can cover. Because we don't have this on a turret, this is going to be the main way that we can aim the laser. So the more of these we have, the more of an arc we can cover. The laser optics on the other hand, will not increase the radius of the optics, and they won't increase that uh, arc of coverage, but they will increase the accuracy of the laser system. Uh, as we might be being able to cover a, a great surface area, those lasers will be quite dispersed uh, accuracy-wise. And the more of these we have on, the more pinpoint the accuracy will be, and the more likely we'll get the uh, laser to be on target. Okay, so this is more or less the basics of building a, a laser system. And let's go ahead and jump out of the builder really quickly here and sh demonstrate what happens with a laser system set up like this. What happens when we fire it? So you see this uh, ray of energy extended out and it will go along with my mouse cursor and kind of aim along with it. And you might think, well, that seems to be working okay. But this is actually very misleading. The laser that's coming out right now actually does absolutely nothing. It will do no damage whatsoever on any target that you uh, aim at. You need a system that we have not yet put on um, before the system will, uh, the entire laser weapon will work. And that is under the couplers, a Q switch. Now the Q switch is described as changing uh, the laser from a continuous beam into a pulse weapon. And I'm going to just put one on for now, and we can see what happens when I, when I do this. So uh, let's go ahead and fire the weapon now. Now the weapon system is operating as it should. It will damage a target. And you can also see that it seems to be reaching much further than that little uh, ray was before. Now right now we have a very slow you know, steady shooting laser. I'm holding down the button and this is as fast as it fires. If we want it to fire more than that, if we want it to pulse more, well, we're gonna have to add on another Q switch. Now the Q switches have to be added onto the coupler with the same kind of legal requirements as the, uh, the cavities. So they'll take up one of the slots on that coupler. And as we add on two more of these uh, Q switches, now let's see how the laser has been modified. Notice how much faster the pulses happen. Now the consequence of this is each of those pulses is going to carry less overall damage, but it gives you a much more rapid course of fire. You can also see the distribution of accuracy with what we have set up. And we can also always keep an eye on how much charge we have going through the laser system at any given time. So this is the, pretty much the bare bones of a laser system. And let's go ahead and try it out on a target. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not sure if I will try it out on an enemy ship. Instead, you know what, let, why not? Try it on an enemy ship. I don't really have any steering for this ship, but I can kind of nudge it with my body to get it around to the right direction. <laughs> All right. We're almost facing in the direction we need. That's probably close enough. Nope. Now, the advantage of a laser system is that 
it's much easier to point at the uh, target uh, than a uh, cannon would be. Because with the cannon, you have to lead the target. You have to, you know, make adjustments for range and everything. With the laser system, you really don't have to do that. But as we can see, because of the dispersion of that laser, even though I'm getting the shots a ballpark, the target that I'm firing at is so small and so far away, we're not really hitting it. So as we get a little bit closer, we'll eventually be able to hit it. Another downside of a laser, as we see we're finally starting to hit it, is it doesn't actually do nearly as much overall damage as a, a very simple cannon would. A cannon might be doing something like, you know, uh, 40 or, uh, well, let's say 80 to 100 a hit. Whereas the laser system might only be doing, let's say, 20, 30-ish a hit. So, much less, maybe uh, a quarter of what you can expect out of a, a similarly complex cannon system. But there's a lot you don't have to concern, concern yourself. You don't have to concern yourself with an ammunition supply, which is an, a, a good advantage of the uh, laser system. You're just going to be using whatever engine you're probably already going to have in your craft to power it and whatever fuel supply that you would also be uh, supplying that craft with. Now that we're closing range, we'll probably get much more likely hits. And you can see it's not doing a lot of damage, you know, 14, 25, 43. And this is from continuous hits too. So very minimal damage. If I was hitting this with a cannon, it'd be doing, you know, uh, 80 to 100 a hit. Now those hits would be, you know, maybe not as common or easy to achieve because as I said, I'd have to lead the target. But as you can see, even with uh, my dispersion and everything, that this is uh, pretty challenging. And unfortunately, our engine just took a hit. Of course, we could modify that uh, as we discussed by adding on more optics onto the front. This will make the weapon much more accurate. I think the AI just killed themselves. Um, so this will make it much more accurate, as we can uh, see as I fire it. You don't get nearly as much dispersion now. And let's load in another opponent. We'll do one that's a little bit bigger, although slightly more dangerous. And we need to angle our craft a little bit. Hopefully we can do that before he starts firing on us and really hurting us. And there we just lost our, <laughs> our laser. And you can see kind of the difference between what a laser can do and what a cannon can do. With a, with a cannon, he was able to take out my laser weapon with one hit. Now he has a pretty big cannon. Um, but let's go ahead and get rid of him so he stops being a threat. So this is, you know, there's a lot of downsides to a laser system. There's upsides. You don't have to have any ammunition supply. Uh, and uh, you only really need to power it with uh, the engines that you more or less are going to have anyway on most craft. But uh, the other downsides are, for instance, the fact that it doesn't do very much damage. The fact that it's very uh, space consuming. All of these cavities and, pu uh, and pumps and and what have you, takes up quite a lot of space. Now there is a, one other thing you can do with a laser system uh, that I am gonna show you here in a second. And that's that you can separate the power source from the, uh, from the, uh, the uh, laser combiner itself. And to do that, we're gonna use a laser transceiver. So. Let's go ahead and show that off here. Uh, and to do that, I'm actually going to get rid of uh, the laser combiner that we have, and I'm going to put it in a different spot. So I'm going to build it. We're going to build off to one side here just to kind of demonstrate this. Now, there's a lot you can do with this. Let's go to the lasers. We're going to do a connector here because we need to use a connector uh, to attach this. And then we're going to have a laser transceiver over here. 
and we're going to have another one over here. And then you can see that the two have connected each other together. Uh, you're going to need a combiner again. So we'll build that there. And then we can build out our weapon. As we did before, we'll keep it simple. We'll just do a couple of these and a couple of these. There we go. So we have a very similar weapon system, and this will work just as the other one did. But now we have uh, the, the power source in one place and the laser weapon in another. And we can demonstrate that real quick. And there you go. It works exactly the same, it's just in another spot. Now one thing you need to keep in mind though, is that this is not going to work on a turret. You couldn't have this power source on your ship and then have this on a turret because the turret is considered as an, a separate entity. It won't legally connect these two. You're going to have to have them uh, both on the same unit, uh, which is kind of disappointing. It'd be nice to, you know, be able to have maybe a turret, you know, up above uh, your power supply and... Uh, have a much smaller compact turret as a result, but unfortunately, uh, that's not the way it works. I'm also also curious if you can do this by, uh, you can multiply our efforts. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, multiply our efforts uh, by doing this. This is not something I've ever done before, so I don't know if this works, but we're gonna experiment here. Uh, so what I'm doing is I am building a second uh, laser combiner system with a transceiver and seeing if this will also connect. I'm, I, this is just out of curiosity. I actually don't know if this works or not. So it looks like the transceivers are connected correctly. So let's get our uh, optics out. So we need our steering optics. And then our laser optics. There we go. Now we have a dual weapon system. And we're also going to go under the control and get ourselves a uh, fire control computer. This way we don't need to be near uh, the weapon itself. Just near the weapons controller. And let's see if we can get both to fire. Yes, indeed. So this way, we can actually have one power source supply two laser weapons. So very interesting. Uh, and let's see if we can even combine this even more so. Oop, again, I'm hitting the wrong button. <laughs> uh, and do another laser combiner. And we need steering optics. And the op the normal laser optics. And let's see if we'll get a three shooting laser system now. All right. There we go. It does appear to work. So off of one power supply, we're able to fire three laser combiners. And that's something that you can do with this. And, and you know, it, again, the depth of this game is, is sometimes pretty amazing, the kind of things you can do uh, with these systems that uh, if you think outside the box, uh, it never really occurred to me until I was doing this video to try something like this. And there you go. You can do it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is uh, Mouse Gunner signing out.